I encourage you to always be curious, always seek out things you love, and always work hard when you find them. The Clippers, I'm sorry to say, are never going to leave the Lakers basement, bro. And what I mean by this is they are never going to rise up in LA and take over, no matter what. And we thought once Kawhi and Paul George came to this hard fighting, aggressive Clippers team, they would without a doubt change the culture of this pathetic franchise as we know today as the Clippers. And two years later, moving on to year three, this Clippers team is rightfully sitting back on its throne as the biggest losers. Now they had a chance, I'll admit, they really did have the talent and if they put the pieces in the right spots, gave themselves a real shot. But recently, over the past several months, the Clippers have repeatedly shot themselves in the foot over and over again. And this last move with Eric Bledsoe shipping out Patrick Beverly, Rondo, and Daniel Oturu is the cherry on top. The Clippers are absolutely desperate for a championship and will have and done everything they can to overcome it. However, they have unfortunately made the wrong moves. And while yes, they still have a talented roster, this would be another year where they disappoint in the playoffs and I can argue this will be their worst year so far but for those who think oh this is the move for the Clippers this is Clipper year Clip Nation stand up bro it's not happening the Clippers are going to fail once again and let's talk about it first off before we really get into this season I want to bring up when the Clippers best chances of the finals was and that was in the 2019-2020 NBA season which was their first year together. As a Laker fan, even if you didn't want to admit it, you were a bit scared of this team, that 2018-2019 roster that overachieved and had that hard fought battle with the Warriors in the first round. They showed fight, passion, and the will to win. And then you add Kawhi and Paul George coming off one of their best career seasons. This team originally was at its very best and since that time has slowly but surely gotten worse. The reason why I say their best chance to win the finals was that year, their first year together, was for a number of reasons really. Number one, the Lakers were at their weakest. 2020 Lakers were great, but they did have some holes in this team that luckily no team through the playoffs really challenged. Number two, now if the Clippers do make that playoff run and run into the Lakers, you're looking at playing seven straight away games if it gets to that point. If you played them in the bubble, you will not have to face the obstacle of a Laker filled crowd every game. And number three, the NBA has caught up. There isn't one team so far who has not given the Clippers trouble. You look back at the 2020 first round against Dallas, that was trouble. Obviously the next series blowing a 3-1 lead to the Nuggets. And then this year, it took 7 games to beat Dallas in the first round. And the second round, the Clippers had to drag themselves back from an 0-2 deficit. And then going out to the Suns. So the NBA has caught up and more and more teams are capable of challenging this Clippers team now. And if for some miraculous reason, they won the West. You're not challenging a team like the Nets. So that's why I say the Clippers best chances at winning the whole thing was in 2020. And their chances for all the reasons I named are adding to the fact that the Clippers championship hopes slimming year by year now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at why they will fail this season. Going into this season I believe more and more people are recognizing the Clippers are more frauds than ever. I mean, in all honesty, are they really even top 5 anymore? You got the Nets, Bucks, Lakers, the Heat, they all got a lot better, the Jazz are going to be better, Philly still exists, the Suns aren't going away, the Nuggets are still better, and a lot of other teams as well are still out there. So what was in 2019 the Clippers being undisputed top 2 or 3, are they even top 5 now? That's something to think about. But why is it that we don't look at them the same? Well for one, they aren't the same team. That culture they put in place of being a team of dogs, bro what dogs are there? They're all gone. Patrick Beverly, Montrezl Harrell, Lou Williams, the value these three added to this team will and has undoubtedly been missed and this team even with the guys they brought in cannot make up for it. Yeah they have Kawhi and Paul George so of course they're still going to be good but these three specifically in the 2019-2020 season were the behind the scenes pieces as to why the Clippers look so scary. These three on a nightly basis lit fire and were the emotional rock of Clipper Nation. With these three guys gone, what is the culture of the Clippers now? The Clippers made mistakes along the way that we overlooked that eventually led to this downfall, some of which we would discuss, but another piece that is gone that was very valuable was Rondo. 
Rondo brought another side to this Clippers team they didn't have, and that was a guard that can control a game and do all the little things that didn't necessarily involve just scoring. They don't have that now even with their newly added piece, Eric Bledsoe, who they hope will save the day. They don't have a leader. They don't have those guys who light fire in others. They don't have those guys who play every other night 110%. Those guys are all gone. So what do the Clippers have? Let's take a look at that. This, at least for the time being, is the roster of the Clippers will have going into next season. At first glance, it's a pretty good roster on paper. No doubt there is talent here. They, of course, will be a factor in the West. But out of all these guys, show me a leader. Show me a guy who gets the most out of others. Regardless if it's an emotional leader or leader just in the locker room, the Clippers don't have any of that. They don't have an alpha. And before you sit here and tell me Kawhi, yes, Kawhi is great, but he's not a leader and has never been one. He goes out there, he does his job, expects the others to do the same. It has always been that way since San Antonio. And even in Toronto, Kawhi of course is the best player, but best player does not equate to a leader. Kyle Lowry was without a doubt the leader of that team. That's not a debate. I'm not saying that's Kawhi's fault. He's just naturally to himself. He's a silent assassin, goes in there, does what he does, and that's it. I can't knock him, but he doesn't lead. He just picks up and carries. There's a difference. Paul George, obviously he's not a leader, he's a straight baller, but wherever he plays, someone else was a leader. In Indiana, as crazy as it seems, but far a long time ago, Lance Stevenson, he was more of a leader during those playoff runs that team had. And in OKC, clearly that was Russ. So your top two guys play well together and are stars, but they both are looking at the rest of the roster like, you need to do your job so I can do my job, and vice versa. The role players of this team, Reggie Jackson, Eric Bledsoe, Serge Ibaka, Zubak, Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, and others are nice pieces to have, but they don't bring that same value and fit like Beverly, Lou Williams, Montrez, or even Rondo did last season. All these guys are pawns that follow to the leader of their team and play under their role. But with no leader to follow, and two superstars who low manage every other night, these guys don't really know their role that well. Therefore, adjusting as a team come playoff time is going to be a very high obstacle to climb. I'm gonna just go ahead and make it nice and simple. This team has no voice, no leader, no discipline, nobody being held accountable. I mean, Kawhi or Paul George are allowed to low manage even if they got a fucking paper cut, which I'm not saying the Clippers don't have the right to do so. I'm saying that rubs other guys the wrong way. That rubbed Beverly, Lou Williams, and Trez the wrong way because they're all playing hard every other night while the stars who just joined this team are getting royalty treatment and are just half fasting out there in the regular season. You play half the regular season, and in a time we desperately need you to come through in game 6 and 7, you become Houdini and vanish. That was a huge reason for the drama and controversy that took place throughout the team. They traded away or let some of these guys walk who were extremely valuable to the success the Clippers had and some of these guys like Rondo was just much needed. And the guys they brought in are all solid pieces, but nothing more than that. But solid pieces don't always equate to success. A lot of these guys such as Reggie Jackson and Eric Bledsoe bring the same thing. A point guard who is capable of getting you buckets, that's cool to have, but they don't have a guy who can control the pace of a game, read the defense, break down defenses, draw double teams for their superstars, light fire in this team with their defense, all those guys are gone. And year 3, this is a whole new team that is without a doubt not as good as they were 2 years ago in a much tougher league now. The Clippers are always going to be around with Kawhi and Paul George as their two best players, but just talent alone gets you halfway there. And the other half they would need, they have nothing of that. The Clippers are not mentally tough, with no voice, no sense of leadership, no sense of discipline, and no players holding other guys accountable, guys half-assing the regular season. This is a recipe for disaster, and it's going to be another year build up for the Clippers to fall apart once again. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. How far will the Clippers go next season? Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, and I'll see you guys later.